All right. So we're fortunate to have with us today Darren Shaw. Darren is the founder and president of White Spark, which is an Edmonton, Alberta, Canada-based marketing agency. He is the perfect person for this topic because he can share with us the results of the White Spark Local Search Ranking Factor Survey and also give us tips on how to get your local small business to rank. Welcome, Darren. Hey, thanks for having me, Gail. It's fun. I always love talking about local SEO. So, yeah, um, I can just dive straight into my presentation, I guess. All right. So, local SEO strategies and tactics for 2021. Just real quick uh, about me. Who am I? Uh, so, I've been doing SEO since 1998. I founded my company, White Spark, in 2005. Um, I do a lot of speaking at conferences around the world, like MozCon. Search Love, PubCon, local university. Um, I do a lot of research and writing about locals SEO, um, including what I'm going to talk to you about today, the industry standard local search ranking factor survey. That's a, It's a significant survey that the industry looks to to see, well, what works in local SEO today? What, how, what can I do to rank better in Google's local results? And so I'll be going through that survey today. Um, I also have a really uh, active YouTube channel. I publish a video every week where I talk about various aspects of local search ranking and conversion and all kinds of stuff. And my company, WhiteSpark, provides software and services to improve your rankings, monitor your rankings, drive more conversions. Um, we have over 130,000 users of our software and hundreds of uh, agencies and small businesses uh, using our products and services. So today we're going to talk about uh, results from the latest local search ranking factor survey. Uh, I'm going to give you some tactics on how to increase conversions from your Google listing. I'm going to dispel uh, some common local SEO myths. And I'm going to give you a very actionable to-do list, like things that you can do today to improve your rankings and conversions from Google's local results. So the local search ranking factor survey was developed by David Mim you know, 12 years ago. Uh, the first edition was published in 2008. Uh, David ran the survey. Uh, he is one of the original godfathers of local SEO. He ran the survey up until 2017, where he got tired of all the work and he was focusing on other things. So he passed the reins to me, and I've been running it for the last uh, three editions. And so what the survey does is it surveys the top experts in local search, so names, of people that are publishing about SEO, local SEO, they're researching it, they have, they're working in the trenches with clients, they're understanding what drives results in local search. And so lots of the biggest names. And the benefit of the survey is I aggregate all of that data and dispel it into like one, here, this is, these are the things. These are the most common things across all of those practitioners that they're seeing driving results. So it's pretty, it's pretty valuable. Um, the results can be seen, uh, can be found at this URL, whitespark.ca local search ranking factors. So you can go to that URL and get access to the full study. I'm gonna give you the, the, the synopsis today, kind of go through all of the, the main things. And so the first question I ask in the survey is, for local pack rankings, to what extent do each of the following areas of local search contribute to rankings. And so the reason that I ask this question is like, you know, how do the different areas impact local search? Those areas being like links, website, GMB, citations, social media, all those things, like how do they impact your ability to rank? And so just to be clear, this is what I'm talking about by a local pack. So a local pack looks like this. You type in something like Seattle Personal Injury Lawyers, you're going to get local pack looks like this. And then if you click that link at the bottom to more places, that goes to uh, what's called the local finder. And so that's all of the results beyond the three pack. And uh, apparently on mobile, uh, that's switching to a two pack. So that, that's uh, reducing the amount of, of results. But if you click more places or on mobile, you click you know, more results, it, add, it shows you the local pack. Finder. And so these are all the local results. And this is what we're concerned with in local SEO. How do I get more prominence, more rankings, 
more conversions from this because that's what a lot of people are looking at when they're searching for businesses. And so these are the, the seven thematic areas I'm asking about here. I'm asking about Google My Business, citations, on-page signals, so like your website, links, reviews, behavioral signals, and personalization. And so this is interesting. So a lot of people think, oh, SEO, it's my website. In local SEO, you got to think about a lot more than just your website. It, it, and in traditional SEO, it's usually just website and links. But in local, you've got all these other things that you also have to think about and, and work on to improve your rankings. And so the way that uh, the participants of the survey score this is they're like, oh, I think that GMB is worth 30% and citations are worth 5%, websites worth you know 10%. They kind of go in, they score it. And then at the end, it adds up to 100. So it's like, what is the weightings? And then I combine all of that and I get this chart from 40 different practitioners of how they're weighting, how they're scoring, how much of these different aspects impact your ability to rank. And so you can see here that GMB is taking up the biggest piece of the pie here at 33%. Um, reviews then at 16%, website stuff at 15%, and then links at 15%. And then you've got citations, behavioral signals, and personalization taking up the rest of it. Um, and it's really interesting to watch how this has changed over time. So over the course of the survey, um, if you go from 2013 to, to the last survey, which was completed at the end of 2020, you can see that uh, results have changed quite a bit over time. And the big story here is that um, GMB has really taken off. So GMB back in 2015 was only 15% of the pie. But as Google has added all of this new functionality and features to GMB, it has really grown in prominence. And so now it's up to 33% of the pie, according to the thoughts of the survey participants. It's always important to clarify, this is a survey of opinions. This is, we don't have Google's algorithm. This is just what we are feeling and what we're thinking. And it's the aggregate of 40 plus opinions of people that are noted experts in the industry. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that this is exactly how Google's algorithm works. What it means is this is what we think. This is this is what we're seeing as we're trying to optimize and improve rankings for our clients. Another big story is the decline of citations. So back in 2015, citations made up 17% of that pie and they've dropped uh, consistently year over year down to 11% and down to 7% in terms of perceived prominence of how citations impact rankings. I got a whole section on that in this presentation, so I'll talk about that later. I actually don't think, I think that number is false. I think 7% is a little bit too low. Uh, it's, it's bigger than that, uh, and I'll talk about that. Uh, so question 1B is here I'm asking the same question, but I'm asking about it from a local organic perspective. So what does that mean? Well, local organic results are the results that are underneath the pack. So if you typed in Seattle personal injury lawyers, you're going to get the local pack. And then underneath the local pack, you're going to have uh, the local organic results. So the local organic results are the blue links underneath. And Google will often inject into those results local businesses. And so you're going to see Yelp in there and other sites like that in these results. But local businesses get in there. So you're like, if that's my, I want, it, want my business to rank number two in those blue links underneath there. How do you do that? And so this is the question that we're getting at here. So you want to be in the pack and you want to be also ranking underneath the pack. And so local organic is heavily weighted towards traditional SEO factors, which are your website, you know, how much content you have. Have you optimized your website? Are you regularly publishing content on the topics? That's your kind of relevancy signals. And then links. Does anyone care? Those are your authority signals. Is, are, are people linking to your website? Are they mentioning your website? Those things heavily factor into those organic rankings. There is a little bit of this stuff that's happening. Uh, also, uh, behavioral signals being one. So that's like, are people clicking on your link? The more people that click on it, the more likely they are um, to uh, rank you higher. If Google sees a lot of people are clicking on your results, that can actually impact your ranking. But it basically comes down to website and links. And you can see that here with these blue bars. If you compare what factors into the pack versus what factors into those blue links underneath, you can see the pack in green, heavily GMB. And then the local organic, the blue links, heavily uh, website and links.
So the second question I ask in the survey is, what individual factors have the biggest impacts on local pack finder? And so this is getting out of the sort of broader thematic concepts and deep into the individual little tiny things you can work on. And so the way that the participants um, sort of score this stuff is they have a huge list on the left-hand side of like 120 potential factors, and then they drag them over to the right side and they sort them. And it's, it's kind of a tedious job because there's so many things to think about, so many things to look at. And so they sort them and say, I think this is the number one most important thing. This is the number two most important thing. It's the number three most important thing out of the whole world of potential things that might actually impact your ranking. So it's a tedious job. But when you get over uh, 45 of the world's best experts in local search doing this, you really get insight into what they are seeing driving rankings. And so I, I combine it, I aggregate all the results and into a, a thing like this, and I can see you know, what, what seems to be the most important individual factors that are driving local search rankings. And so how does this pan out in the end? This is what we end up with. These are the top, according to the experts, in, in their opinion, these are the top 15 things that are actually going to have the biggest impact on your ability to rank in the local pack, local finder. Number one, primary category. You've got to get that primary category right. It's huge. We've got keywords in the business title. All this, this is the thing. So you might want to just take the slide deck after and, and keep this, this uh, as, as a sort of point of reference. But I'm going to kind of go through many of these individually. So the first one is your primary category in Google My Business. This is so important. If you, uh, if you don't have the right primary category set, you're going to have a huge impact on your ranking. A great example would be something like a law firm. They are a criminal criminal law firm. They set their primary category to be law firm. Law firm. They would have a huge ranking boost if they changed their primary category from just a generic law firm to criminal defense attorney. Criminal defense attorney would have a much would be a much better primary category. They would improve their rankings overnight with that kind of a change. And so making sure that your primary category is the one that is most closely aligned with the terms you want to rank for is a huge tip. It's very important. It'll have a massive impact on your ranking. It's the number one thing that Google will look at uh, to drive rankings. Uh, there's this great little tool I would like to recommend. It's called GMB Spy. You can actually use this tool, and you can see it in the screenshot here. Uh, when you have it on, you go to someone's listing on Google Maps, you can click the little tool and it'll show you what categories they have set on their listing. Super helpful for competitive analysis. You can kind of look at your competitors. What categories are they, are they using? I want to use those same ones or the ones that are ranking really well. And it can give you ideas of what categories to use. And so the second most valuable signal is keywords in the business name. This is a tricky one because it's actually not, it's against Google's terms of service and uh, against the guidelines to stuff keywords into your business name like this business has here. So if you look at this example, you can see they've added all of these keywords into their business name. And sadly, it works. It actually has a massive impact. I did a video about this recently where I showed how, how much of an impact keywords in the business name has on your ability to rank. So it's pretty huge. Uh, Joy Hawkins did a great study about this as well. Look at this impact here. Basically, they didn't rank at all. They added the keywords. Boom, they jumped up to number five. They removed the keywords. They dropped right back down. Keywords in the business name is number two on our list because it has such a massive, significant impact. The problem is, is that you shouldn't be spamming. I'm going to talk about spam a little bit later. Your business name that you use should be your actual real world business name or your risk getting your listing suspended. The third most important thing is proximity to the searcher. Google's local algorithm is heavily weighted based off of how close you are to the person searching. So if I'm sitting in my house, my office, I, I, I search for dentists, Google's going to be, Google knows where I'm located and it's going to show me the dentist from around me. If, if you are a dentist located on the deep south side of the city, I'm, I'm relatively central in the city, but, you know, deep south, deep north, anywhere on the outskirts of the city, you're, you will not rank for me for searching for my spot. 
But now if I went to the north side of the city and I was close to your office and I searched, then I would see your results. This is the thing. No business can rank around the whole city. It's not possible. Google will show you businesses that are close to you. And so um, most businesses are going to rank number one when you're searching like right from the business location. But as you get in the surrounding areas, the rankings will drop. This data comes from Local Falcon. This is the software system that will show you your ranking at your location and then all the surrounding areas. So it's really cool to see that. Um, and people don't even realize this, that rankings are different on every street corner. I did an interesting study uh, to test this. I basically drove from my house to the supermarket. And as I went, I stopped on every street corner and I ran the search on my mobile phone and I took a screenshot. And it's incredible to see how the ranking results change. So I did the search for dentists. And so when I'm sitting at my actual physical location and I run a search for dentists, these are the three businesses that rank. We get West Central, West Mount, and Oliver Family. I go one step, one block forward. I search again. Okay, it's the same. This, these are pretty close. The proximity is the same. I go over to you know another block. Oh, and look, now we got a new business popping into the results. Newfield, Cindy, M. Doctor. So uh, I go another block, different results, different results. So these results change quite a bit. It is important to note in these results that there's one business that is pretty consistently in here. So the point, like West Central Dental is in most of these. Empire is also in most of these. And so the interesting thing about it is that, yes, proximity is a huge signal that will impact your ability to rank and how far you can rank. But some businesses, by investing in other local search tactics, can have prominence in, a, in local packs for a much broader area. And you can see that with West Dental, West Central Dental. But other businesses like, um, I guess that Newfield one, right? She only ranks, Cindy New, New, Newfield only ranks kind of in a small area because she probably hasn't invested in a local search tactic to expand her ranking radius. All right. Um, number four signal is having a physical address in the city of search. That's very important. You need to actually be located in the city that you want to rank in. And uh, this is a really interesting e example that uh, Colin, Colin Nielsen did at Sterling Sky. So this business here, if you look at the screenshot on the, uh, on the far left here, the, their mailing address is in Olathe, Kansas. They actually, so they think we're a business that's located in Olathe. But Google actually thinks that they're located in Lenexa. And so you can see that because while they're in Olathe, their, their address is in Olathe, this border is drawn around Lenexa. And so their business is just barely outside of the o Olathe border. It actually thinks they're in Lenexa. And so as a result, this is how they rank in Olathe. They don't rank at all. They rank, rank number one at their own position, but they basically don't rank at all. But if you search State Farm Lenexa, they actually rank fairly well in Lenexa because Google thinks they're in Lenexa. So this this kind of thing can happen where if you're not actually in the in the city of search, it'll have a massive impact on rankings. And that's why this came up as the number four most important ranking signal. Number five is uh, additional category. So after you set that primary category, the additional categories become really important. Every new category you add there is like another chance to rank for a different term. So it's almost like if you, there, the concept of keyword stuff in your GMB listing doesn't exist, but categories is kind of like that. It's like, I want to rank for this, I want to rank for that, I want to rank for this. And so just be careful that you don't do category confusion. So. There used to be this idea of category dilution that, oh, well, if I add too many other categories, it'll reduce the impact of my main category. This was tested, again, by Colin. He found that adding additional categories had no negative impact on the primary category. So the recommendation these days is to add as many relevant categories as you can, but be careful about uh, category di or confusion because some of these additional categories can can confuse Google. Google's like, I don't know what your business is. Doesn't make any sense. So if you're a business that offers fried chicken, uh, you also offer massage therapy and chiropractor, 
in, in the same location, you got to just kind of pick an angle and go with it because you could totally confuse Google. I did an interesting test where I set, you know, our primary category is internet marketing service. Uh, you know, software company was one of our additional categories. It made sense. But then I was like, what would be the impact if I added a whole bunch of totally unrelated weird categories? So I added hat shop, uh, hot dog stand, sexologist, colorectal surgeon. I had all these crazy categories. And look what happened. My, this is my rankings before I added the categories. When I added them, we totally tanked for a lot of our local search terms. And then we went right back up as soon as I removed those categories. So this demonstrated that you can confuse Google with your categories. So it's important to choose uh, you know, categories that are actually related to your business. Another important tip is that Google's are actually adding new categories all the time. This just happened like um, a month ago. They added pediatric dermatologist. Prior to a month ago, if you were a pediatric dermatologist, you could, would just have to put dermatologist. But having the more specific category, pediatric, is actually really valuable if that's what people are looking for. And so when Google adds new categories, it's an opportunity for you to rank. And it's actually a really great opportunity because a lot of businesses aren't aware that Google's adding new categories all the time. So keep an eye on the category list in GMB. Regularly check it and make sure and see if there's new categories popping up because if you can be a little bit more specific with your category like i mentioned earlier with the difference between law firm and criminal law firm that actually is a big advantage and most of your competitors won't be on top of it so it's a great advantage sterling sky keeps a list of any category changes they update it every month and so you can just kind of keep an eye on this page or follow joy on twitter and she posts every time there's been new i think she posted today actually about some new categories and so you can see any new categories that are coming in. It's really valuable to stay on top of it and it add those additional categories to your listing. The number six ranking signal was uh, quality and authority of links to your website. Now, be clear, not you don't link to your GMB listing. You can't send a link there. Well, you, you can in a weird roundabout way. It's been tested, it has no impact. You link, you're linking to your website. Specifically, the page on your website that's linked on your GMB. Most small businesses, that's your homepage. And so getting quality links, so you, you could go and buy 10,000 social bookmark garbage, you know, fake blog comment links on Fiverr. It's not the quantity. Those probably have no impact on your rank. It's the quality. So getting high quality links from high quality sources. A, a good example of this is here's a, here's a law firm. They have a link from the University of Alberta. The University of Alberta is the, the, the primary university in their city. And now they've got a link from that to their website. That has a massive impact on ranking. Really valuable to get high quality links from authoritative sources. And, you know, and you know, it's like if you look at this example, so links from places like Crunchbase, University of Alberta, those are really valuable links. And you can see this in a tool like Ahrefs. This is uh, called Ahrefs, A-H-R-E-F. S. And so this, this allows you to analyze links. This DR stands for domain rating, and it's the sort of quality of the site. Whereas, sure, they got a lot of other links too. They got links from random uh, Chinese directories, from random business directories, coupon sites. These have a low domain rating. The, the quality of these links is pretty low. You could get 10,000 of these. They wouldn't have much of an impact, but one of these would have a big impact. So it's really, so this signal here is about the quality of the links you have coming to your website. That has a big impact on your ability to rank in local and those local organics. Uh, number seven signal was having keywords in reviews. This is a big, big thing. And so uh, Google is actually parsing the content of what people say when they review your business. And they're looking for these keywords. More keywords that you get in your reviews that are relevant to your business, more people that mention that the better you're gonna rank. And so that actually has a huge impact and it's really valuable. Uh, my tip for that is to always ask, when you ask for a review, if you if you ask a customer for a review, say, oh, and it would be great if you mentioned the service that we did for you. When they do that and they add that service to the review, it's a little bit of a ranking booster. Uh, number eight is having high numerical ratings. This one's pretty obvious. If you have a th uh, 2.1 rating in Google, it actually will suppress your ability to rank. Google wants to rank prominent, uh, good businesses, and they do use the ratings to uh, evaluate 
the quality of the business. So if you have a very low rating now, this is something that's worth working on and improving your rating. Number one, stop being a crummy business. Do a good job. Uh, number two, make sure you ask every customer for a review. Because if you never ask any customers for reviews, you're typically only going to get negative reviews because people that have a good experience, they're not inclined to just go and leave you a review without being prompted. So it's important to ask every customer for a review. Number nine, this one is new on the list this year, spam fighting. What is spam fighting? If you think about what I mentioned earlier about keywords in the business name, a lot of people know about that and trying to take advantage of it. So they're stuffing keywords into their business name that aren't their actual business name. What you can do as a ranking booster is you can remove them from the results. Because if you remove someone who is spamming from the results, they drop, you go up. It's amazing. It's like if you let's say you can knock out the top five people because they were they were keyword stuffing their business name and you were the number six person number one rankings. So spam fighting is a really valuable tactic. So what you do is you identify people that are spamming and you report them. So you can hit a suggest and edit. That's a temporary measure. There's also the thing, a thing called the redressal form. So you can look that up. It's called redressal form. And if you submit that, the business could get suspended and removed permanently. And so uh, if you use suggest and edit, you just change their name from this long keyword stuffed version to what their actual business name is and you click submit. So you just press that suggest and edit button. It's on every listing and you can make that change. The problem with doing it this way is that it's temporary because the business can now be like, oh, well, I'm going to go put my keywords back in there. And there's really no harm. If you submit a redressal form, then someone at Google will actually look at it. And if it's a repeat offender, they could get their listing suspended. So the, the redressal form is a bit more of an effective way to do it. And yeah, so spam fighting. Plus 85 other factors, there's, there's so many things. I would encourage you to look at the full report over on whitespark.ca, the local search ranking factors, and you can really dig into all of the individual little things that you can do to improve your rankings. Um, I'm gonna move on from the local pack finder signals to the local organic signals. What can you do to improve your rankings in the local organic space? Just to remind you, the local organic results are the blue links underneath the pack. That's local organic. And so here they are. Boom. There's all the list. That's a lot to read on one slide, so I'm not going to make you read it. I would encourage you not to read it because there's too much to read. Um, I'm going to break it down for you here. Um, the real summary is it comes down to two things. Number one, build links. And these are the signals within links. So what are the quality of the links? Uh, when they link to you, are they including you know, your keyword in the link anchor text? Uh, what is the authority of your own website? Um, do you have a diverse set of links? Um, these are kind of link related signals. So getting quality links, diversifying those links, and uh, that's, that's basically what it comes down to, and getting as many of those as you can. And you can do that forever. It's, it's a beautiful tactic because link building never ends. If you line up you know, the top 10 ranking businesses, you can almost always see the ones with the most quality links generally tend to rank better. Uh, if you want some suggestions on link building, I have a great post on that. That is uh, seven easy local link building tactics. You can look that up, uh, Darren Shaw, seven easy local link building tactics, and you'll find it, or White Spark local link building tactics. Just Google that, and you'll find this post. Uh, it's a really valuable set of seven things you can do to build links. And then the second thing that you want to do, so you've got the links. The second thing is your website content. And that really comes down to um, have you optimized your website? Like, does your title tag on your homepage say home or does it have your keywords in it? So keyword optimization throughout your website, um, basic, basic SEO uh, optimization. Um, having lots of content. Does your homepage just have a two-line sentence that says, we do plumbing and HVAC. That's not going to help you rank. You need to be more relevant. You need more content. you got to give Google something to chew on. And so lots of good quality content that is uh, optimized with your keywords across your whole website has a big impact on your ability to rank. Google looks at that for, for the local organic, and they also it will impact your ability to rank in the local pack finder as well. And, you know, Working on that local, uh, I just mentioned that, working on your local organic stuff has a huge impact because if you can improve and get ranking higher in those blue links down below, 
It'll automatically improve your rankings in the local finder. The two things are tied together. Uh, Google doesn't have, this is the local algorithm, this is the organic algorithm. They have the organic algorithm, and then the local algorithm is all of that stuff plus some other things. And so when you are dialed in on the website and link stuff, it impacts your rankings in the pack as well. So it's really valuable to do that. The third question I asked is really useful because I wanted to know, what are you doing more of this year that you, you didn't do in past years? And so I love this question because it really kind of surfaces the new stuff. What's, what's new and exciting? And so spam fighting certainly was a hot topic in the last survey that I mentioned how to do that and, and why it's so important. Uh, they're focusing on getting more links. They're focusing on really building up the GMB listing. This is a big problem. People will have created their listing a long time ago, but they haven't added uh, stuff to it in ages. And so it's important to uh, continue to enhance your listing, getting more reviews, and focusing on that primary category. The third question I asked 3B, which is, okay, well, what are you, what are you spending less time on? And what this comes down to for everybody in the survey this time around was mostly citations. It's like, I'm not worrying about consistency. I'm not spending so much time on the quality, quantity, like getting a lot of, of additional citations. I'm not trying to ensure that my citations are complete. I'm spending less time on this, on citation-related things. Um, I kind of disagree with the, this sentiment. This has largely been driven by a few reports that came out. And um, I actually think that we're we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater here because citations, I think, still provide a pretty significant benefit and they're still worth doing. And I've got some evidence to back that up. One, we continue with our uh, White Spark Citation Building Service to get a lot of people saying, they build citations, they saw their rankings go up. It, it's a, a, a common thread. It keeps coming in all the time. We, we build about 50,000 listings every single month. And so our clients are telling us, hey, we're doing this because it's working. Agencies are using us for this all the time. And then this, another reason why I think there's some interesting things is that citations take a long time to realize the benefit. I did this really cool case study for MozCon where I stepped through all the different activities in SEO over a period of time. So one, I put up a GMB listing. Two, I, um, I then got some reviews. And I, I was spaced everything out by a couple months so I could see, well, what was the impact of each individual step? I took a business that had no online presence at all and tried to get them ranking and, and step through the stuff. So I did all this work and I was able to get them. So if you go from when we started here at the beginning, you can see the rankings went up pretty decently. We, we, we did some work, it had a positive impact. This is the date, so basically July something is the date that I stopped doing any SEO. I think it's July 10th here. You can see I presented at MozCon. No other SEO work was done. We're like, okay, you're on your own. Good luck to you. And they didn't do anything. They didn't get the more reviews. They didn't get more links. They didn't update their website. They, they, they weren't too focused on this. But I had done all the work for the case study and they were like, okay, fine. We stopped doing any SEO work. But look what happened to their ranking. Their rankings continue to rise over the course of the next year. Had a huge continuing ranking increase. Why was that? I think it's because the citations continue to roll in. What ends up happening with citation building work? Let's say I went and I, 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 I ordered 100 citations. I got them all built today. Within you know, one day of submitting all those citations, maybe 25 of them would be live. They would go live on the websites. Within a week, maybe there'd be like 40 of them live. Within two weeks, or what, I don't know what that is. Uh, is that, um, yeah, so within a month, I might have 50 live. Within three months, I might have 65. It takes a long time because what ends up happening, you submit a listing, and it goes through a moderation process before they actually even submit it to on, and make it live on their website. It takes a long time. And so, then not only that, so maybe over the course of a year, finally all those listings I submitted have actually gone live on the websites. But Google takes forever to even find these. We're talking about low authority domains, websites that have a huge, huge set of pages. Google takes a really long time to crawl all those pages and find these. So the benefit to your business for these citations 
can take like 1.5 years. So you can build 100 today. You won't realize the full benefit until like a year and a half later. So you're going to get some benefit immediately, but they continue to trickle in. Um, another thing is this Uberall study. Hang on. I knew I had this slide. I got the slides mixed up a bit. But if you look, you can actually see a somewhat correlation between when the citations were built, the timeline it takes, and the timeline that we see here with the ranking benefit. And so I think that citations continued coming in, and that was contributing to, to why this business continued to see ranking gains over time. That you just can't evaluate the impact of citations on a short time scale. You can't say, oh, I built citations one month later, I didn't see any rankings go up, so they don't work. And I think that's what a lot of people are kind of thinking about, but they need a much longer time scale to evaluate their effectiveness. Another reason why I think citations still have a lot of value is a new study that just came out from Uberall. They did a really interesting thing where they tested businesses that only had the basic listings. So they have a network, they have like they have 3,000 locations that were on only four directories, GMB, Apple Maps, Facebook, and Bing. And then they compared that with 3,000 businesses that had you know, a, a much broader citation profile. So they were listed on all those other sites too. And they could see that businesses that were listed on the other sites had a much higher percentage of visibility looking at the GMB Insights data. So number of searches they appeared for, how many views they got in Google Maps, all that stuff. If they only had the basic, they were way less visible than if they had all of these citations. Really significant uh, research here. Um, same thing here in terms of number of calls, driving directions, website clicks. Big increase here as well for the businesses that had a citation profile belt out versus businesses that didn't. And so I think a lot of people are, you know, think, ah, citations are not what they used to be. Some people even say, ah, I don't even bother with it anymore. I think that's a mistake. There is definitely value in citations. It isn't, you know, if you think about the original pie chart, it's not a huge part, I think it's like 10 to 15% of local search rather than what came in this year is like 7%. I think there's more benefit to it than is listed here. Um, if you wanted to do it, this is how I think you should do it. I think citation work should be just making sure your listings are, are cleaned up and accurate only on the top like 12 sites, Google, Bing, Apple, data aggregators, TomTom, here. These are sites where real humans will see your, your business data. I don't think that citation consistency really is much of a signal in SEO anymore, but it is valuable to have the right information so people call the right phone number and go to the right address. Uh, second, you should get every industry-specific citation you can find. So this is like, if you're a plumber, it's plumbingdirectory.com, myplumbers.com, those kinds of things, homeservices.com. Those kinds of sites are really valuable, so you want to get listed on all of those. Um, any city specific site, so like if you're in Denver, it'd be denverbusinesslist.com, denverbusinesses.com, any of these directories that are specific to a city or a state are also really valuable. And then I think you should get the top 30 to 50 sort of general business directories, so just get listed on, you know, merchant circles, super pages, yellowbook.com, these kinds of sites um, that are in the top, we have a list on our website of our top, top citation sources. Um, I think it's useful to get on those. But don't sign up for a service like, sorry, Uberall, Uberall or Yext, because I don't think there's any need to pay for this in an ongoing subscription model. You can just get this work done once. You can totally do it yourself. You find the sites, you get listed on them. It's not that much work. Or if you want someone to do it for you, we have a listing service where we do exactly what I just laid out here. We have packages that kind of meet this exact model. And so you can get us to do it, and it's it's a one-time fee of a few hundred dollars. So um, it's a relatively low expense for potential local search benefits. Question four. I love this question because there's a lot of misinformation floating around the Internet on uh, – local search. So what are the things that actually don't impact rankings that people think impact rankings? So what this really comes down to is a lot of stuff. People think that if you add keywords to your GMB description, it'll impact your ranking. Nope. Uh, they think that uh, adding keywords into the services or keywords into the products, keywords in your Google post, none of that actually impacts ranking. 
at Google. And so these are a bunch of things that are not actually going to impact your rankings. And I want to add one more. Service area businesses seem to think that if they add all of these extra little um, zip codes, that they'll help them rank in those areas. That's actually not a thing. Uh, service areas, all they ever do is draw that little map. And so they actually have no impact on ranking. So you can set the service areas if you want to sort of show it on your map. When someone searches your business, they can see the area that you service, but it doesn't actually impact your ranking. So it's important to know that. I talked about conversions, what individual factors have the biggest impact on conversions. And this is because ranking number one doesn't mean you're going to get the phone call. Look at this example here. All about drain cleaning ranks number one, but their listing is trash. They've got, they're listed at a PO box. They've got one review. They, they got no photos. They got nothing going on in their listing. By comparison, the number four ranking business for this search term, drain cleaning Edmonton, is Mr. Reuter, uh Plumbing of Edmonton. They got 628 reviews, a great rating. They've got this amazing related to your search box, which is getting pulled from their Google posts. They've got great photos. They've got lots of compelling stuff in here. This is this is the business I'm going to want to call. They're going to get the call, not the number one business. So it's not all about ranking number one. So conversions are important. So how do you improve your conversion? So I asked the survey participants, and they talked about this. So the first three things are definitely uh, related to reviews, so getting lots of reviews. That's going to have a big impact on whether or not you get a call because people are reading those reviews. They're looking for businesses that are highly rated. Um, being close to the searcher has a big impact. Um, having messaging turned on would have an impact because people can message you directly. Uh, setting hours. Having a complete GMB listing is a big deal. Uh, you can even turn on a booking feature in GMB. Basically, it comes down to what we see in this screenshot, filling out every field on your Google listing, regularly doing Google posts, regularly uploading new photos, featuring your products and services, really building out your listing. We have a whole service around this. Uh, our Google My Business Management Service is basically our SEO program at WhiteSpark, where we'll do all of those things for you, including review acquisition, review strategy, review monitoring, review replying. We manage your Google Q&A. We do spam fighting for your business. We basically optimize your Google listing and continue to maintain it to make your business stand out and drive more conversions. So we have a dedicated service with dedicated account managers that work with you on all that stuff. So we have that there, which does all of this uh, GMB conversion stuff. It, you can definitely do it yourself too. The, the real key is to just fill out every field on your GMB listing and regularly upload stuff to it. Well, are, is there anything you can do that would have a negative impact? Like things, oh, definitely don't do this because that might hurt your ability to rank. So this is the, that, what this question is getting at. What factors are most harmful? And so these come down to, uh, you know, having the wrong category, definitely going to be have, have a problem. Being at a false business address, so like using a fake address, like a P.O. box or, or UPS, was basically the same question. Um, site. Having a, a hacked site or malware on your site will definitely Im, uh, impact your rankings. All of these things uh, will have a negative impact on your rankings. So it's worthwhile to review this slide and make sure you don't have any of these things. It's all kind of common sense. I want to leave you with a really helpful seven-point checklist. Number one, set your best possible category in GMB. I talked about that. Uh, number two, add any additional categories that are relevant. Get those on your listing. Big impact on your ability to cast a wider net and rank for more terms. Uh, number three, ask every customer for a review on Google. If you're not asking every customer, your reviews will skew towards the negative. Ask every customer. You get this magical thing that happens where it skews towards the positive. And additional tip, make sure you ask for keywords in the reviews. Um, add plenty of keyword-rich content to your website. So build out service pages about every individual service, and go into detail. What are the frequently asked questions? Why, why are you good at it? What, how do you approach your projects? Go into full detail about everything that you do. More content on your website will make you more relevant for the terms and it'll help you rank these. Uh, make sure you optimize your website. So that's keywords in your web title tags, your headings, and within the content. So making sure you don't just write the page without thought for keywords. What do I want to rank for? Get those keywords in there. Um, get links to your website, high quality links, ideally. Don't just go out and get a thousand 
social book marketing links. You want high quality links and mentions of your business going to your website. One easy way to get links is the citation stuff that I talked about earlier, though that's like your kind of baseline links and then getting a link from universities would be even better. Um, and then asking your customers to review you on additional websites. So a lot of people put all their eggs into Google, eggs in one basket, they focus only on Google reviews, but there's benefit in getting reviews from all of your industry specific sites as well. That's a top tip. And we also have a software, uh, it's free, it's a free little checklist tool that will go through all the things in the local search ranking factors. You add a business and then it kind of gives you a checklist for that business, do this, and it's prioritized by the local search ranking factors. This is a free tool on our website at uh, local SEO checklist that you can use. It will guide your local SEO work and uh, it's ideal. It's based off of the local search ranking factor survey. You learn more about the survey here. And one final thing is how do you currently rank now? You might not know, you can run a search in Google, but how do you rank in different areas? It's all very important to sort of keep an eye on this. And then if you're doing this work, is that work having an impact on your local SEO? And so this is where I would recommend a local rank tracking product. Of course we have one, we have, I, I think it's the best in the industry. Uh, we track local rankings and organic rankings across Google and Bing. And we give you filtering options and allow you to sort of see how you're ranking and monitor your progress and see if the work that you're doing has positive impact. That's my presentation. Uh, and now I would love to hear any questions that may have come up. First one came in early on and asked, how do you make sure local customers can find your business when there are numerous other businesses providing similar identical services in your immediate area? And I sure. kind of think uh, that the whole webinar answered that question. Yeah. Everything I just if said. If you agree, we'll go on to the next one. Yeah. Someone asked, uh, Robert asked, yeah, everything you just presented. All right, so Robert said, when you say GMB, do you mean NAP within GMB? I noticed that GMB and reviews are separate, but I assume review, the reviews you mean are Google reviews. I don't really understand the uh, GMB NAP thing. Uh, GMB means Google My Business, so that's where you go to manage your listing on Google. And reviews, when I refer to reviews, I am mostly talking about reviews on Google. That's the number one thing. So you want to definitely focus on that first. But as I mentioned at the end of the presentation, you should be working for uh, a diverse set of reviews on other sites as well. Uh, next question. Categories that are so close to each other, like self-storage and storage, how do you choose the primary? Is there a tool for that or something? Um, yeah, so that, you know what? I think it's a testing issue. So when you're that close, I would play around and see which one teams tends to drive more results. And I would give it a long period. I would give it like, so if, if you were actually in the storage category, you could set storage as your primary. And I would give it at least three months to see how does that impact your GMB Insights data. If you look in Google My Business, there's an Insights tab. It'll tell you how many views you're getting, how many search impressions, how many calls, how many driving directions, how many website clicks. These are the things you want to look at. How how many of those are we driving over this three-month period where we set the primary category to storage? And now do it again for self-storage. So now change your primary category to self-storage and see what the impact of that is. Um, if one's better than the other, then go with one versus the other. I would suggest doing that if they're really close. Otherwise, you could also look at a search volume. So what has higher search volume? And you can use a tool like the AdWords Keyword Planner, which is a free tool. You just kind of, any anyone with a Google account can get in there. And you can run the Google Ads Keyword Planner and it'll tell you which term is searched more. And so that's also another good way to guesstimate about which one is gonna be more valuable for you. So Sharon asks, what's the difference between link building and a citation? And so actually, there's a pretty significant difference. A citation doesn't necessarily include a link to your website. A citation can just be a mention of your name, address, and phone number on any website on the internet. And so that would be, typically we see them in business directories, so things like yellowpages.com, uh, brownbook.net, merchant circle, yelp.com. These sites typically, or where you're gonna think of what a traditional citation is, but they could go anywhere. You might have a local blogger mention your business, and maybe they don't link to your website, 
but they mention your business's name, address, and phone number, that's a citation. So any mention of your name, address, and phone number is a citation. A link is a direct link from one website to your website. And that, it, they're separate things. Typically, a citation also includes a link. And so citation building is kind of like you're also doing some link building. But a lot of the citations you might get don't even link to the website, but there's still value in them just for the mention of your name, address, and phone number. And this evolved from the early days of local SEO when Google was trying to rank all these small businesses that didn't even have websites. What, how do you rank a business that doesn't have websites when your entire algorithm is based off of links? And so this is where the concept of citation came in because they had to identify which businesses were most, most prominent when they didn't even have websites. And so that's where just the name, address, and phone number factors into the local algorithm, and that can have an impact on your ranking. All right, next question uh, is from Sean. Sean asks, what impact, if any, do customer reviews and social media mentions have on local ranking? So customer reviews on your own website or any other website that's not, um, not indexed, like testimonials, if they're, if they're kind of in a system, they don't have much value uh, for ranking. Social media mentions, I would say almost zero, probably no value. So if a lot of people are tweeting about your business or they are sharing your business on social media, on Facebook or whatever, or Instagram. Google doesn't really pick up much on that, but reviews themselves have a huge impact on ranking. It's one of the most important ranking factors. Number one, reviews on Google, that is absolutely a ranking factor. You wanna get lots of reviews on Google. And then number two, get reviews on other sites that are prominent in your industry, those things would definitely have a positive impact on your ability to rank. Next question is, how long does it take for spammers to be removed from Google Maps? That's a great question. It can be painfully long sometimes. So the, the suggested edit can typically go live to somewhere between instantly and you know, three weeks, if you just go and suggest an edit on a business and it'll it'll remove the keywords from the business name. But that's, a like I mentioned earlier, it's a temporary impact. You want to actually go to the Google's redressal form and, and, and file a complaint. That'll actually get reviewed by somebody. Those can take up to a month to two months to actually get reviewed by Google and to have an impact. But that's a more permanent impact. So it can take a while but it is definitely uh, worth doing. Question from uh, Lior asks, is it more important to generate more, generate content on my site or external sites? Your site, 100%. Definitely more valuable to put more content on your website. Your own website is like Google's primary source of information about your business. And so, you want to really build that out with content because that's what Google's looking for to understand who you are, what you do. Homepage, very important. Lots of paragraphs of text. Don't just have like a simple static web, web page with no content on it, just pictures or something. Uh, make sure you have lots of good text that then links to your sub pages. And your sub pages, you should have one for every service and every sub service. Build those out. Really talk about what you do. Uh, you know, enhance them with customer feedback and, and case studies and just all that content on your web, own website will have a very positive impact on your ability to rank in both the local results and the local organic results. Content on external sites, I don't even know what that is. Like maybe like an external blog or something like that. That's very useless uh, in my opinion. I would not spend a lot of time on that but I would focus on trying to get links from external sites. You want them to link to your website wherever you can. All right, so uh, Sharon asks, how recommended is the resource investment of local SEO, on, local SEO global on scale businesses that have multiple locations, cities, and within the country? So, how recommended is the resource investment? So one thing I would say about local SEO is that the resource investment is not huge. It's not that expensive. You don't have to spend a lot of time or money on it to start reaping the rewards. So like the citation work is just a few hundred dollars. That's a one-time investment. Um, so if we're talking about scale, it 
Okay, that's where it can get going. If we're talking about hundreds of locations then and or thousands of locations, then you need a pretty clear strategy. I would recommend working with an enterprise SEO company that can do local SEO enterprise stuff at scale. And that would be someone like uh, Local SEO Guide, Andrew Shotland and Dan Leibson over there. Um, and actually, there is actually a case to be made for, you know, what scales, because all this work is like, it makes a lot of sense at a single location for a single location business, but it, does, it's, it would be really expensive to do that across a thousand locations. And that's where you need automated systems like, um, you know, something like gather up for reviews where you can automate your review acquisition. You need something like Uberall or Yex to manage location data and push that instantly. That is expensive still at scale, but it's a lot less expensive than trying to do it manually at scale. So I hope that is what you were getting at and it answers the question. But for any business that's less than 10 locations, you can definitely manage that uh, in-house uh, manually or using services like, uh, like our WhiteSpark Google My Business Management Service or our listing service. Uh, you know, there's, it's not that much investment to manage, you know, 50 businesses or less to do it really comprehensively and right. Um, yeah, well, hey, no more questions, just a comment from Sharon, definitely, and thanks so much. <laughs> Glad you liked it, Sharon. Thanks for coming. Right. Yeah, I think I did it. Well, timing is perfect. Look at that. All right. I'll That's try to done. Done. And we got through all the questions, That's all the questions. right on the button. Right. And can you hear me, Darren? Yeah, I hear you now. Um, I don't know if you have that. Just in case people can, if you're an attendee and you would like to be mentioned, you could send an email to community at bizsugar.com to have your feedback on this webinar added to the blog post about the webinar where the video will also live. So, you know, let us know what you thought. I thought it was amazing. It really was great. Thank you so much, Darren. Thanks for having me. Uh, you can always reach out to me on Twitter at, at Darren Shaw underscore. If anyone wants to have, have any follow-up questions, I'd be happy to chat it out with you over Twitter. Or you can email me direct at Darren at whitespark.ca for any uh, follow-up questions. Thanks, everybody. Nice to see you. Nice. Appreciate having me. And uh, shoot me a message on Twitter or email if you have any follow-up questions.